Tonight on Country Squire Radio, it's a Squire Select, baby. Ow! Yeah! <laughs> that means we're going to drink on air. Plus, <laughs> we got a pipe question of the week asking John David Cole about norting interchangeable stems and clarifying something he said on an earlier broadcast. Maybe he got it wrong? Maybe. It's not within the realm of possibility. I think he got it wrong. Uh, also, we got quick fire <laughs> questions. Your listener feedback, I'm going to attempt to smoke a pipe, at least for like the first opening of the show. All happening right now on Country Squire Radio. Welcome to Country Squire Radio. I'm Bo. And I'm John David. JD. Hey, Bo. Good evening, dude. Good evening to you, sir. How you doing tonight? <laughs> dude, I, I'm good. It feels good to to have you smoking a pipe with me on air. Man, I mean, that that that's a good feeling. Yeah. It's, that, that, that's a good feeling. Yeah, it's it's terrifying. It, it, it well, it, it's funny. You know, normally you're so uh, <laughs> in, in, enthralled and intertwined and enmeshed with uh, the technology of what's happening here while we're doing Country Squire Radio that you don't. Uh, don't trust yourself really to smoke a pipe while you're doing. T and tonight you're like, you know what? I, I got my new Spider-Man pipe. Like we're we're gonna do this. Well, like so, so this is the first time you've smoked a pipe on Country Squire Radio. Yeah, it'll last for all of about two minutes here at the beginning. Well, you're gonna get nervous because you're gonna have to fidget with something over there, and then your <laughs> pipe will die, and then that'll be that'll be it. But yeah. you, you're you're doing a good job. Well, full that disclosure, full disclosure. Yeah. When when I was sitting here waiting for us to go live. It, I realized that I didn't press the button because I was tamping. I know, ash. right? No, you're tamping that ash, right? Know, and so yeah. when you tamp that ash, sometimes you forget to to press the button. It's how, it's how it happens. Yeah, but, uh, but yeah, no. <laughs> I, I, look, in honor of our brand new pipes, these gorgeous custom made corn cob pipes. I, you know, we we had to smoke them on air as kind of a. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah, thank you. thank you to to Liz White in Longview, Texas, and her husband Josh for. Uh, bringing them all the way over, we're uh, really, really thankful for them. I, I, I love my Cartman pipe; it uh, brings out my inner uh, Archie Bunker. <laughs> your inner, inner cheesy poofs. Yeah, and and, and that too. Yeah. <laughs> all right, but I am gonna have to set mine down so I can. No, you're doing great. Yeah, on. no, that's good. All right, so yeah, man, we uh, a lot, a lot of, a lot of great things going on. Of course, Father's Day has come and gone. It has. Yeah, golly, it was crazy. You know, just slinging uh, a lot of pipes and and tobacco for. Uh, folks, uh, you know, a lot of gifts this time of year, but frankly, as, as we talk about and kind of chuckle about, uh, you know, it, folks use a sale as an opportunity to buy something for themselves, right? right? I mean, at Christmas time, you're uh, a lot of times, you know, pipe guys are, are buying, uh, you know, most of the stuff for them and not for someone else. So, you know, you're spending so much money, you might as well throw another hundred bucks on there for, for something that you want, you know? So, um, anyway, anyway, it, it's been a lot of fun getting geared up for the big move and, uh, about to, about to move next door. Uh, here in a couple of weeks, which is terrifying and and wonderful, and we're uh, we're excited and nervous and and all the above. So, uh, getting ready for that, which is which is good. Um, have a new employee here at the Country Squad. Yeah, ha have have a new employee. You know, yeah. I, I, I we're we're so committed to um to diversity that uh, you know I, I I was like, what you know, we, we need someone really really different. <laughs> <laughs> super different, uh -huh. you know. So when people come in, they cannot, you know, identify with someone just really incredibly different. And so, so I went out and I, I found the one other uh, premium tobacco enthusiast in our hamlet of Jackson, Mississippi. The one other person who loves what we love, uh, whose name is also John David. His name is John David, and I and I hired him. And you hired him. And and and, and so he's John we, David the tobacconist. He's John David, not, not to be confused with John David the tobacconist. No, that's right. Yeah, that, yeah. that that that's exactly right. Yeah, and yeah. so, uh, man, if you call the shop and and you ask for John David, there's a really good chance you'll get him. <laughs> there's a fifty percent chance it'll be me. <laughs> right, 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 right. And uh, welcome to the South, the land of double names and uh, and sweet tea and apple pie. And and, uh, and here at the Country Squire, we have uh, Mr. John David Burns, who is now on our staff. Okay, uh, we've been affectionately re affectionately referring to him as JD, and people have been referring to me as John David. And okay. so, okay. there there's a, you know, I, I'll I'll just kind of subtly make that hint to you, Bo. Yeah, you, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so so he, he's John David, and you're JD. I that, think we that's all heard that exactly. Loud and not clear. what I said, but <laughs> 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 no, it's so funny, man. Yeah, it was, it was great. Uh, J, JD, he's a a uh, recent retiree from uh, the state, uh, you know, was able to retire kind of young because he got his years kind of in the state real early. Right, and so right, right, yeah. uh, I was like, man, I don't want to just sit at home. I want to, you know, do something fun. He's big into cigars and has enjoyed him for a long time. Uh, uh, original Jackson native, been with us a long time. And, uh, at, you know, here in the area, uh, shopped at the Country Squire since the 80s. And, um, man, we're, we're really glad to have him up here. He, he brings a, a lot of expertise, particularly in the cigar area, and uh, but but knows knows a fair amount about pipes too. So we're uh, we're 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 really happy to have uh, have JD, and and now you can come to the Country Squire to see the John Davids. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's great because you know you're, it's you're just Cole, amazing. He's Burns, and you know what happens yeah. when you light coal on fire, right? It burns. It burns. 
<laughs> snap it's so bad it was terrible man well you know it, it is interesting because i was thinking about the fact that uh you know there's some uh I, I'm, there, there's some people who need to turn off their cell phone sorry about that mike we're gonna go ahead and uh silence my phone there man it's uh it's it's beginner night tonight my bad this is what happens when i, I try to smoke a pipe on air i'm not even smoking it on anymore <laughs> but i'm gonna blame it on that i'm gonna blame it on that um but yeah man i was thinking about how uh you know just a lot of stuff's been going on here the local community and no, that's right of course yeah you know with father's day and and i would imagine father's day in many respects is almost kind of like the black friday of uh of of kind of the, the pipe world right like it is such a holiday that's yeah, so sure. tied with sure pipe, pipe tobacco uh man I, I had a good one the uh the the kiddos they they brought me uh breakfast in bed and oh that's nice yeah they took me to go see the incredibles uh the, okay the second incredibles okay this is good did you, did you ever see the first one uh, of course not oh man oh man it's the best pixar movie yeah oh it's so good no no i, I the first one I, I i didn't see it no I, I probably it is probably one of those movies i should but to be honest i have no idea what it's about oh it's it's really it's, yep. the, it's the family their heroes it's, you gotta you gotta see it it's uh it's it's adorable it's precious this new one you're, you're handling this really well by the way a lot of times i feel shamed when i admit that i haven't seen a movie that you've seen right, right. but tonight you're handling this like a true <laughs> like like, like <laughs> someone's being really gracious you're like oh man that's okay like you know you know, let me tell you about it and instead oh man i can't believe that like you well, he, he, he's so worthless like you'll never make a good father and all this stuff like man it, you know not, not watching movies it, it kind of it's it's discouraging right because you you're, you're that guy that everyone's like well man how could you sleep at night because you hadn't seen like you know uh leprechaun part six you know <laughs> I'm just like, man, I, anyway, I, 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 pre feel, I, I appreciate your grace tonight. Yeah. That, that means the world to Absolutely. me. Absolutely. I feel, I feel like yeah. you've been getting some hate lately, man. I, That's, dude, I, I'm just tired of it. Like, you know, it, I don't, I don't like movies. It's the blockbuster Give me a break. season. No, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, no, but like, that's the thing. The, uh, the, the, in all fairness, the Pixar, the Pixar is there a movies, leprechaun part six? I, you know what? If there is, I haven't seen it. If somebody <laughs> wants to judge me for that. They're more than welcome to. But, uh, but no, no, it's a, a great movie. And, uh, and, uh, I would, I would strongly encourage people oh, to go. That's good. Check that's it good. Out. Yeah. It's a good, good Father's Day movie. Uh, all right. Also, we got to let people know that finally, finally, uh, the unboxing video that we promised a couple of weeks ago is finally live. Uh, we did actually shoot it that night, and then I had to learn iMovie. And so if you want to see the worst, <laughs> like, like you know, just very entry-level YouTube vlog-esque video ever, uh, head over to the YouTube channel, the Country Squire Radio YouTube channel. And uh, this is one of those, like, times where we, you know, it, 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 it's very apparent that we're podcasters, right? So, you <laughs> right. know, it, and I mean, it, that we are podcasters. We say that very clearly. We we uh, broadcast this on YouTube, but this is a podcast first That's right. uh, production. And, uh, and, and a lot of times when you watch our video content, you're uh, immediately... Uh, aware of that right. but, but we just want to reinforce that so you, you know you just know hey man our our our, our podcast is first class right. it, you do such a good job editing and oh, uh, putting it all together that uh all that uh you know that that magic that makes that so sharp and professional polish and and, and then there's this uh this other but we we did have fun and we uh we we got to open it up and man of course uh, man, the folks at the Ten Society hooked us up with some really cool swag, and we're we're happy to open that. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. It was it was sweet. And if you have a box you want us to open, <laughs> <laughs> well, give us some practice. We'll, we'll we'll do some other stuff. It'll be fun. Well, hey man, uh, we've got a, a fun show tonight. But first, of course, we got to give major shout outs to we the two new club members uh, joining the Country Squire oh, dude, Radio great. International Pipe Club at the Squire level, ladies and gentlemen. His name is Eric. Crowell, he, he he does he crows well. He yeah. crows well, dude. Eric Crowell, dude, uh, joining at the Squire level. Oh, wait, thank is it actually Crowell because I thought it was Crowell. It might be. Maybe Crowell. I should have mispronounced it as Crowell. <laughs> uh, it might be Crowell. I, I I would when I look at that I would say Crowell. Yeah, but but you know that's probably a southern like laziness. To be clear, if, if I ever say your name, if I ever pronounce your name correctly, know that I mean no offense by that. I am actually. <laughs> <laughs> trying to mispronounce your name. <laughs> uh, then joining us also at the Pilgrim level, we got Craig Harrell. Craig Harrell. We got Harrell and Crowell. Craig Harrell and Eric related. Crowell. They could be related. Yeah, I, I doubt it. Yeah, I highly doubt it. There's yeah. literally no indication. Dude, Craig, thanks for joining me at the Pilgrim level. That That's awesome. You guys are... Uh, man, a really integral part of of keeping us on air, Absolutely. making sure that we're able to do this every week. And, um, you know, this is a community effort. It's something that we, uh, you know, Bo uh, conceptualized and I begrudgingly came on board with. <laughs> and then we uh, got this going. And, and, and you know, here we are four years later and we've got a got an amazing community. But it can't it can't keep going without without y'all's help. And so, uh, 
uh, we're really, really incredibly grateful. So if you'd like to join the uh, club and be part of that process as well, head over to country or patreon.com slash country square radio, uh, join the club, be a patron goes a long way. And, uh, yeah, shouts out again to those guys. Eric in particular has got some uh, feedback that's coming in later into the show. You know, uh, real quick as a note on that, we, you know, our shop is moving a couple doors down. You know, we've talked about this, uh, just, uh, on and on, but, um, you, you know, a lot of our, if you've been a Squire level member for, uh, a year, you have a, you have a brass plaque with your name on that's it right. in our shop. Yeah. Like that, that's something that you have right now. And, and you may not even be aware of that, <laughs> but for folks that have been members of the Squire level, um, uh, you know, of, of country Squire radio pipe club for, for a year at that level, you've got a brass plaque with your name on it here in our shop. If you ever want to see, like to see it, if you ever want to see it, like I want you to email me. Uh, yeah, my, take my, a picture of it. Yeah, I, I'd be. I would love to do that. Uh, you can email me at um, at, what's my email address? Country Squire nineteen seventy <laughs> at gmail dot com. And if you'll just let me know, like, hey, I'm on there. I, I'd love to see my plaque. Like, I let, like give me the honor of, of showing that to you. Um, and, and we're you know we're moving a couple doors down, and, and we're we're trying to figure out just the right place to put all those. <laughs> the plaques uh, will be in this location. A, Whatever new stuff I know, comes right? in, it'll yeah. be your job. Well, this is going to be the <laughs> the um the urban squire. Right. We got the country squire and this will be the urban squire oh, that, right. that sells, um, you know, Kratom. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, and Wizenators. Yeah. Yeah. This, yeah. That's, that's, that's what they'll have. And, and in vaporizers. That'd be awesome. Right. Also, yeah. uh, show, <laughs> show at country squire radio.com. Also, if you can't, yeah, remember. But let us know. We're so if grateful. You like John you David cannot remember his own email address that, uh, just show at country squire radio. I'm just lucky. I was able to buckle my belt this morning. <laughs> right. <laughs> we all were man, because of course tonight is a special night. It's a squire. Ooh, night. That's exactly right. All right. So for those of you not familiar, we've got a series, an ongoing series since the earliest days of this podcast called squire selects. Now this is where, uh, uh, every eight to 10 episodes or so, we uh, take the opportunity to pair various pipe tobaccos with various beverages, typically be beverages. I think almost exclusively beverages. One day, don't worry, that Squire Select barbecue edition is coming soon, but uh, <laughs> fingers crossed, let's hope. But, but I, so like, OK, yeah, anyway, go, go ahead. But for now, the, the shtick is old. Yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> but for now, we do uh, we, we are kind of continuing in the tradition that we have for the for the majority of the time. And that is pairing pipe tobaccos with a little brown water, a little whiskey. And oh, That's right. we got some whiskey. We tonight. do. Ain't that something? Yeah. yeah, man. Yeah, man. I'm excited tonight. A couple of interesting things that just kind of uh, showed up at the door here at, uh, at, at the Country Squire. Um, you know, we are a pipe smoking podcast and we like to kind of mix it up occasionally by figuring out, okay, well, what are, what are some good, uh, you know, nerve pills that can go good with <laughs> our, with our, uh, pipe favorite pipe tobaccos. And so, um, you know, we try to pull some of these out and tonight, a couple of fun ones, um, Bo, this is, um, this is Bell Mead Bell Sour Mead. Mash Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Um, and, uh, it, interesting, interesting, uh, uh, product here, you know, of course, as, as pipe smokers and, and as, you know, someone, uh, like me, if you've listened to the show long enough or a friend of me, mine or the, or the show, uh, you know, I'm kind of a sucker for a story, you know, oh, and, and so yeah. this, this is not just, you know, good whiskey, but it's also, uh, this is also just kind of got an interesting story. Uh, th this is Bell Mead, uh, Sour Mash Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Um, this is made in Nashville. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a bourbon, but it's a very, uh, high, uh, rye content bourbon. Um, and what, what's fascinating about this is it actually, uh, was out of production for, uh, over a hundred years and oh. then, and then was brought back. So the oh. story goes, uh, Bellmead Plantation, which, uh, was in the, in the mid to late 1800s was a really famous, um, a, a equestrian institution. So this was, a uh, outside of Nashville, uh, kind of, uh, you know, place where they would breed horses. Right. And so, uh, just really world renowned for that. It was part of that, uh, you know, the kind of the, the stuff you modern day think of about, uh, you know, Kentucky horse breeding and horse racing and all that kind of stuff. This was a kind of a vintage part of that, that, um, you know, was, was more in the earlier American, uh, tradition of, uh, you know, horse breeding and all that kind of stuff. But and in so, but in Tennessee. But it was right outside right. of Nashville. That's right. And so, um, so anyway, um, it, it, world famous in the 1800s. They they wanted to to set themselves apart. This this uh, plantation basically uh, that was well known for their horses. They wanted to uh, set themselves apart and have um, uh, some luxury products that people from, you know, the city and from other uh, parts of the world could, you know, they could push this and it would be recognizable as something that was kind of synonymous with their 
uh, incredible uh, pedigree, their brand, you know, prize winning. Uh, yeah. All that kind of stuff. And it, it was really, if you think about marketing in the late, you know, 19th century, I mean, it's actually pretty smart, right? You've yeah. got, you know, yeah, I've got this farm. It makes the best of this, or I've got this uh, breeder. We do the best of this, man. We're going to come out with some other stuff. That's also really high end. Um, th think about Alfred Dunhill. You make these awesome pipes. Yeah. Ah, you know, maybe we'll get into handbags and scarves, you know, well, eventually those took over, but <laughs> you know, but that's kind of the idea, right? So, um, so they came out, uh, with some whiskeys. They actually contracted with uh, a group named Greenbrier Distillery to make uh, several whiskeys. Greenbrier, huh? They, they are. Right. And, and, uh, and, and so, uh, they were, they were outside of Nashville there. And, uh, this whiskey was really, really popular from the late 1800s until about 1909. Uh, that's when the state of Tennessee passed the prohibition law uh, for for their state, and so all you know whiskey production just immediately stopped overnight. We of course we know um, kind of how that went. So um, so so this brand lay dormant for a hundred years. Wow, and, which which is fascinating to me. Um, and some kids uh, that that actually were of the lineage of the original distiller of this were actually driving around in rural Tennessee, and they saw a historical marker. And they pulled over to take a look at it, and it talked about the Greenbrier Distillery. Wow! And it mentioned their family's surname on the on the historical mark. So this would have been their great grandparents, like probably great great great. I mean, it's going wow. going way back. Wow! Yeah. yeah. And, and and so I mean, you got to think these are kids that are now probably what thirty years old or something. Oh, they're yeah. you know just a little younger than us. And so, um, and so that they're like, well, we knew that you know some of our uh, ancestors had done some. Uh, you know, brewing or distilling, but we thought maybe that was just moonshine stuff. We didn't know. And then here they are looking at a historical marker. It's got their last name on it. And, and they're like, well, let's go, you know, so they go into a little town and they're like, well, do y'all know anything about this? And they, uh, you know, recommend they go talk to the town historian and all this stuff and they start learning. And before you know it, they're like, this is, this is legit. Like our folks mm. made really good whiskey. They made it for this, this, uh, you know, well-known uh, horse farm. And, uh, and, 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 you know, they, these are new college kids and they're like, well, we don't have anything to lose. Like, let's, let's bring this stuff back. You <laughs> right, know, right. I mean, you know, it, 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 let's cash in one of those, uh, trust funds or something and make this, uh, make this work. Don't we all wish we had had one of those? That'd be nice. Um, so anyway, uh, they brought this back. They got the, uh, all the original marketing and everything, uh, the, the logo, uh, you know, everything is, is all original and they, they're able to, to bring it back, which is really cool. So, uh, on the, on the bell mead, you've got um, just this really handsome uh, two horses that are over the two barrels or the uh, five barrels there. Uh, it's a small batch, handcrafted, 45.2% uh, alcohol by volume. So it's a 90 proof uh, bourbon, which, uh, you know, is not not super strong, yeah. uh, which is good. And um, especially when you're doing a live podcast. Well, it, you know, right. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it, really good stuff. And it's uh, it's just got kind of a kind of the story of it on the back and everything. But um, anyway, really tasty. I'm going yeah, to pour us a little uh, dram of this and then see. Uh, we'll talk about some tasting. notes. Beautiful here. story. I think I think there is a there's a lesson here, though. Whenever there's a beautiful story, you got to you got to pour the, the drink first and then hear the story. As and then hear it. the story after. Exactly. Is that maybe we should do that like for the next that's, the next time? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Bri Brian tuning in from Grand Rapids knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. Cheers. cheers. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's I mean this is good stuff. Like this it's really kind of interesting that, that this just so happened to be uh find its way to the squire because originally this was what I was going to suggest for this week's squire select. Really picked up a bottle a couple weeks ago, and uh, I, I have kind of this ritual on Sunday evenings. Uh, my wife and I wa have been watching this season of Westworld, and uh, as part of the the ritual, I always pour myself a glass of bourbon. And like you know, I try Westworld. Is that the one where they live on the the fort in the water? It's 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 the one with uh, robot cowboys. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so, <laughs> and so the uh, but but it is a very like bourbon friendly show. You know what I mean? Like you, you kind of feel like you have to be drinking some bourbon while you're watching that show. And so I've been, been trying to sample some different bourbons and I actually got a bottle of this uh, to, to have on Sundays, but I yeah. found I was also drinking it, not just on Sundays. And then by the time, and now it's gone. Like, yeah. It, right. I, I finished it off last <laughs> night. So it's just really, really fantastic. I, but well, I it's good. Never knew the story. That's fascinating. Yeah, it's just kind of cool. It's something different, uh, you know, where they, they were able to bring it back. I, I love the symb symbology on the front of this bottle here. Um, it, the, the horse that is on the right, actually uh, it, that, that horse has a name. Both of these horses had a name. They were both very famous uh, in the mid to late 1800s there at 
uh, at the plantation, and they were um, the one on the right is named Bonnie Scotland, and uh, and that horse is an ancestor. <laughs> Bonnie Bonnie Banks. That's that great. that horse is an ancestor of Seabiscuit, War Admiral. Wait, hang on, what what Seabiscuit? Like it's the Seabiscuit? An, the Seabiscuit, War Admiral, Man of War, Secretariat. An American Pharaoh. Hang on now. Hang, now, whoa, now, whoa, whoa, hang on. Hang and, on. Whoa. And 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 four five, four of those horses were triple crown winners. Yeah. No. 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 These. This is. Yeah. This is like. This is horse. I don't know a lot about horse racing, but I right. know those names. Like that's horse royalty. You're right. telling me they all came from this lineage. Like from um, the from this. Right. No. That's exactly right. From from the horse that's on the right. Okay. On on, the, on that logo. Was this right a there. horse that was actually raised on their property, or this is just one they? they I think it was like a, just a horse that they were. You know. One of the most famous horses in the world. So they're the kind time, of aspiring, kind of to right? Okay, exactly. Right, they're like, oh, let's pick out the best and put on there. Interesting. Okay. The, the other horse, I, and I'll let you, you'll have to Google this yourself, but the other horse, um, on there had a a kind of a kind of a name that's not really good for mixed company, okay, but but enough. probably would have had a different uh, connotation back in the late 1800s. Fair enough. And I'll just let you put all those pieces together or not, or use your, our friends at Google to figure all that out. But, um, but anyway, because of that, they chose to take, uh, the names of these two horses off the bottle. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah, they, yeah. They, they were going to leave, you know, just Bonnie Scotland on, but they were like, yeah, we'll just take these off. We, we you know, this, the, the other horse, it just has kind of a goofy name. We'll, we'll, we'll just put it <laughs> right. like that. So we're, we're going to pretend like the other horse is the country squire, okay, our, 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 our favorite, our favorite horse. Uh, that, uh, of course, is, um, you know, that we hear about from time to time uh, running in these yes, races, right? Yes, uh, of course, the, the, those tuning in for the first time might not realize this, but there is actually a... I hear it's uh, like the best horse in the land. Kentucky Derby, uh, uh, a horse named Country Squire. I, I don't know if it ran in the Kentucky Derby, but, but well, actually, I think it didn't run in the Kentucky oh, okay, Derby right. because... Because it, it was such a, a a great horse, it was you know the country squire is such an incredible fast horse. fast tracked him straight to glue. Well, the, the you know what <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the, he bypassed it, the, got the, all the way to the top. No, I mean that. The, the, he didn't run in the Derby because he, you know, it's such an amazing horse. He didn't, you know, he wanted the other guys to have a chance right. to show up. No, right? he started and, from and, the bottom. Now he's right. back here. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the country squire. That's the country squire radio. <laughs> if your kids, if your kids don't know what happened to uh, old horses, well, you'll have to have that conversation. Yeah, with them. But yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so Great we've got uh, Be Bell Mead <laughs> straight uh, bourbon whiskey uh, sour mash, and it's a it's a high rye content. Um, mm. It's a blend of whiskeys that are uh, six to eight years in age, and uh, you'll have kind of a maple syrup. What I really like about this uh, whiskey is the uh, the prominent spice note that I get. Oh, and yeah, and yeah, so yeah. you'll have, uh, there's a, there's an all spice, um, you know, you'll get, uh, just a little bit of cinnamon in there and all that works together really well. So I, uh, th there's also a plum finish on this, which I just think is, is, mm. is fun. And so, um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of flavors. They're all super mellow. Um, I wanted to pair this with something that, would uh, accentuate those flavors, but not overpower them. That's kind of the theme of tonight's pairings. And so uh, we went with, and we're actually both smoking it right now. Uh, it's Sutliff Tobacco's Christmas Spice. Um, and, and, and I think this is a good mm. pairing. It's a mm. good pairing because it brings out some of the natural sweetness of this uh, this particular whiskey. Um, it accents the the spice that's there without overpowering it. Um, and, and it just adds kind of a fun, sweet flavor to it. Uh, without the two really competing, so oh, um, yeah, this is perfect. More, more than anything, it's just kind of a nice, uh, you know, a nice compliment. Yeah, it really. Yeah. Is. And so, like, like as you just mentioned, we're we're both smoking this as, again, carrying on the the historic nature of this particular episode. I am uh, uh, smoking the tobacco as I'm tasting the uh, the the bourbon. And this is the first time you've ever done that. I've, this is the first time on air. This is the first time I've ever done it on air, and it, it's it's fantastic. This is I, you know, I give you credit for your for your pairings, but my goodness. Is wonderful. There's a there's a delicious sweetness that uh, goes into uh, goes into this particular bourbon, and I think that uh, the Bell Mead, it, it you know it it's just enough to kind of push it over the top for that mm. uh, that Christmas spice to give it just a little more. Um, I, I I don't know. You just kind of feel like you're almost uh, drinking a confectionery uh, thing, you know, when when you're when you're pairing the two together. Yeah, I mean, it, it's this is going to be the wrong way to say it, but it almost feels kind of like you're eating like a dessert where every single bite is just like very flavorful. Yeah, and like yeah. filling at the exact same time. Yeah, you know what I mean. It, but it, don't get me wrong, this isn't like an actual dessert per se. It's just more of that similar feeling. 
I guess that's how I would say that. Well, when you get done with that, you're going to have a feeling. That's for sure. That's good. Or you won't be able to feel your feelings. Well, no, it's very good. Right. Very good. <laughs> now, all right. So that's Bell Mead. Bell Mead. Uh, and, and that is uh, from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, Really good. Don't you like that stuff? Mm-hmm. Isn't that tasty? Yeah. I, I, it's one of those that like, you know, we, we find some dogs occasionally on, on Squire Select to to try different whiskeys, but this this one's solid. This I, is, I'll, this I like it a lot. Yeah. yeah. I, this might be part of my new regular rotation. And once more with the tobacco, this was uh, Christmas, Christmas spice, spice from Sutliff. Yeah. Sutliff. Yep. Good, 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 good stuff. Tobacco. Um. Okay. So coming up next, uh, this was purchased, uh, procured uh, for the shop for a party we had recently. Um, and I think the only reason it was purchased was because it has a really interesting bottle, but it turned out to be pretty good whiskey. Okay. I was about to say, but it was one of those things that were like, you know, well, you can't pass up a bottle that looks like that. And it's only like 25 bucks and it says it. It, you know, it sounds pretty good, so we might as well try it. Well, plus it's got the word "ton" in it, and, so and that's that. When you got that word in there, it might also grab people's attention. So. <laughs> it says, "This is a uh, sec- the Sexton single malt Irish whiskey, uh, mm-hmm. distilled in copper pots, and uh, just a beautiful, really interesting. Uh, what is that? It's like a hex- hexagonal uh, bottle. It's got this kind of squat." A uh, six-sided bottle that uh, you know, with a with a kind of a short, stubby spout coming out of the top yeah, there. You can almost um, imagine like going into like an old-school pharmacy or something like that. And yeah, the old apothecary, on. right? Yeah, the old apothecary, yeah. and see that like way up on the shelf, and it's kind of yeah. be the bottle you don't you don't want to necessarily grab unless there's like a yeah. I know you, you, know. you better be real sick right, right. To, to grab this right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> look, it's a, it, it's even got a got a skeleton on it. You know, it does. It does. It, with yeah. a top hat. It, with wearing a top hat. That's right. Oh, that's that's right. awesome. So kind of kind of interesting. It's just a uh, beautiful marketing. It's real uh, almost gothic. You know, it has that kind of um, gothic look to it. So uh, really really interesting. Good good uh good branding there, but. Um, okay, so so I don't repeat the mistake of last time. Mm-hmm. Let's uh, let's 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 do this. Pour well, it up, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna pour this for my co-host here. Don't get me wrong; everybody loves a good barkeeper, like with a uh, bar- bartender with a story. You like, you like to hear the story while Fresh you're glass. drinking. Thank yeah. You. Awesome. Cheers. Cheers to you. Okay, gear shift, big time gear shift. Yeah. Not not a bad gear shift, just a gear shift. Yeah. So the Sexton, um, again, this is Irish whiskey. It's a single malt. And single malt whiskeys are not um, uncommon in Ireland, but it's just one of those things you don't really, you don't, at least stateside, I guess, see a lot of them. They're not the most popular ones out there. We think of Jameson and Bush Mills and, um, you know, Tullamore Dew and some of our, the some of the things. Well, but, you know, <laughs> th- this is not particularly expensive, which wow, is yeah. what's interesting. I mean, the, even this right here, we're talking 25, 30 bucks a bottle. Uh, you know, here in Mississippi, and so, so yeah, that's that same um, range, yeah. really, really, uh, really comparable, but but a delicious, a delicious whiskey. Very simple. Uh, I think it's kind of simple. It's got just a little bit of the, of the smoke on the back of the uh, of the palate, which is interesting. Uh, it doesn't have an age statement on the bottle, but after research, it appears that this is a four year old uh, whiskey, which is not very old. You know, it's not to have something that smooth. That's not a particularly old. Um, old, old whiskey. It's um, it triple distilled in copper pots, which a lot of times means that um, you know, it's just going to taste really uh, crisp and simple, um, w- which it does. The, the difference here is that they age this in uh, former sherry casks, which I think is kind of interesting. Oh, and so you'll have huh. a little bit of that sweetness kind of peeking out uh, there at the end. Um, it, it's just not uh, it, it's pretty subtle. So you're, you're going to have, it reminds me a lot of a scotch, really. You kind of have this, but, but a very mild yeah, scotch, not, a, not very, a, scotch a very mild scotch. scotch. Yeah. Um, there's only four primary stills in the country of Ireland, which is, is funny in the United States. We have stills, you know, all over the place and they're expanding just because there's kind of this bourbon craze. And of course in Scotland, uh, you know, if you can fog up a mirror, you've got a still, <laughs> <laughs> You know, oh, you're baptized in the Church of Scotland. Is you still right? <laughs> this is my Irish accent in yeah, Scotland. That's, um, that's and, great. And so, um, right now, we've got all our uh, Scottish uh, friends that are that are gone as well. I think Kilted Piper is actually on here uh, right. tonight with us. Not but, anymore. Uh, but not not anymore. <laughs> um, so uh, the. the the, anyway, because there's only a few stills that, that in in Ireland, a lot of uh, a lot of the different uh, Irish whiskeys that come out, whether they're small batch or, or names that you've heard of, these are all made in the same exact uh, distilleries and, and and factories. And so, um, the, just if you look closely, if you kind of research this, there's a pretty good 
chance that this stuff is made by the folks at Bushmills. Um, although I'm not positive about that, but that's, if, if you kind of look at who owns who and who's bottling whose stuff, um, it, it looks like, uh, the Sexton is made, uh, by the folks at Bushmills. So, yeah, so they're probably, they, they're probably got some, uh, you know, a little crossover there maybe. Um, and if you drink Bushmills, you may be able to pick some of that up. I, I'm not a big Bushmills person. Um, a- although I really like this. Okay. So it's distilled in copper, not aged in copper. That's right. There was something about the way that you said it, or maybe the way that it's Well, and, and I may have said it wrong. No, no, no I don't uh, think you did. I, I, but it's just, there's something about it that, like, in my head, I immediately went to, like, how do you, age, like, how do you age this in copper? That doesn't seem like it would be a good idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, you, sherry, it's aged in a, in a sherry cask. That makes a that's lot right. more sense. That's right. So uh, it's it's warm. You'll have a little caramel. Um, a little buttery. It, it, it's, it's buttery. Um, this it, there's, a, there's a toffee finish, but it's not overwhelming. This is a very light, uh, kind of airy... Uh, to you know whiskey it, it's not over the top in any kind of uh you know one category uh and, and so i i i felt like perry what 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 are, what are you thinking yeah i mean it's it's very inoffensive yeah in that it's not really making a statement it's there's not there's no water one... but it could be <laughs> but <laughs> i gotta tell you like to be fair yeah. part of this is like you know you got the uh well you just followed it you just followed it up with the uh you know from the bell mead and so it's which, which really makes a bolder statement Ooh, big time um but you that's know, how we do it in tennessee with the with the with the hey that's good southern accent that's, that's, no, thank you. Hey, i lived in tennessee for quite some time actually. oh no you did yeah does memphis count uh you know yeah, it counts. It in counts. all fairness memphis kind of like it, memphis is like jackson it's like like we're here, but we're not. I know. <laughs> you know like we're, we're, you know, Memphis isn't necessarily Tennessee. Jackson's not necessarily Memphis. Uh, uh, Mississippi. Mississippi. Right. Austin's not necessarily Texas. It's the same. Right. And it's not necessarily Georgia. Right. You know, we, we, we do our own. Thing. I got it. Yeah. I got it. Okay. But I'll still um, claim it. If it means I get good whiskey. I'll still yeah. Tennessee. <laughs> well, it, you know, this is a really good whiskey. I, mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. I thought it was very, um, very drinkable, not. Uh, it, it's kind of the mouth, as as the lady who hired me, Mrs. Yeah, Reeves, would have said, very kind, yeah. uh, and, and and very forgiving. Um, but there's not a superlative flavor here. There's not a superlative uh, attribute that's like, man, the thing I really love about this whiskey <laughs> is, is is this, right? And so as I was thinking about this, I was like, okay, well, we need we need to pair this with something that that is is robust. Um, that definitely has a superlative like that just to just to make this more interesting, uh, but that's not going to overwhelm the very delicate flavors of um, of the Sexton. And so, like so how you word it. So the, yeah. the idea is you've got a very delicate whiskey here. Um, it, it's it's quite nuanced, but, you know, you could easily overpower this with almost any flavor. So we want something that's rich, uh, that is uh, is relatively strong, but is but is going to uh, go well and not overpower um you know, with the delicate flavors of, of the Sexton here. And so what I chose tonight, uh, and I, I'm, I'm particularly proud of this. This is Squadron Leader we just recently, uh, uh, from uh, from Sam Gaywith. Yeah, Squadron Leader, we, we have talked about it before. Um, uh, great, great tobacco. Kind of hard to find nowadays, which is a shame. I, I don't know why Sam Gaywith tobaccos are just kind of difficult to uh, get your hands on. But Squadron Leader, it's very venerated tobacco uh, from Sam Gaywith. Uh, Square 10, um, it comes, uh, you know, in this kind of ready rubbed, uh, form that we're all familiar with. A lot of a lot of Sam Gay with tobaccos come out of the tin, uh, pretty moist. This one, um, you know, it's 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 more or less like that, uh, but it's it's pretty smokable right out of the can. We'll let you let you take a look, open oh, yeah, that, and like, open we, that and smell it. It was uh, that only... comes out of my my personal cellar. It's been uh, that that tobacco is probably um, I don't know, maybe maybe three years old, something like that. A nice little spicy kick to the tin, though. But you can definitely tell that it's not going to, you know. It's it's not going to knock the uh, the flavor out of your mouth. This is a know. mellow English to me. Yeah. Um, you know, this is a it, it, you've got bright and dark Virginias uh, that pair really well with Latakia and and Turkish tobaccos. Um, some Orientals there. It's a soft, uh, smooth English blend. It's one of those that uh, is medium bodied. Uh, it, it's decidedly English, but it's certainly not uh, not something that is going to. Um, you know, gonna, gonna kick you over the top as far as a, you know, one flavor goes, it, you know, you'll definitely get Latakia, the uh, experienced palate will, uh, you know, check out some, uh, you know, some Turkish tobaccos in there, but um, this is not a tobacco that is going to just bomb you, uh, which I thought was a good pairing. It, it's certainly robust enough though, to come to, to pair with something like the Sexton to give you just frankly a little, a little more flavor, you know, just something that is going to let you appreciate the, the whiskey that you've gotten here. 
um, but then also have something that uh, you know is gonna gonna leave you with. I, I think I think if you drink this whiskey by itself, you're gonna be left a little wanting. Maybe just mm-hmm. it, this is a good whiskey, but you might be left a little wanting. And, and you know we've we've had other whiskeys like that on the show, um, and, and so I think maybe this is a good strategy to to follow that up with something that is gonna um, give you a little body. Uh, you know, not overpower it, but certainly make the experience more interesting. That's good. Yeah. I mean, maybe I might drink the sexton for the sole purpose of being able to enjoy some squadron. To leader. smoke the squadron. Leader. Right. <laughs> Cause that's the thing, man. Like sexton, like I love, love the branding, love the packaging, love the, the skeleton and the, uh, and the top hat. I think that's super cool. Um, but yeah, it is really, you know, I mean, no accounting for tastes. Everybody has different things they like or don't like, but I kind of feel like if you're, if you're drinking whiskey, uh, why would you drink this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, well, with, it's with, with no it's, disrespect. It's, it's incredibly mild and sippable. Right. I mean, it, it's it one of those like sippable. you know, if you like a, a lot of folks don't like uh, particularly strong flavors. That's true. So that you know, this can kind of has that. There's enough smoke. We, we call uh, those Midwesterners. We ca- <laughs> 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 and we just lost everyone from Illinois. Sorry, Brian. Um, yeah. Uh, but you know, it's it, it. That's one of those things. You know, it's uh, it, some people like uh, you know, tobaccos that and and whiskeys that are um. You know, just just very, uh, very sippable. It's your folks that that smoke straight, unflavored black Cavendish, right? I mean, it's just kind of a that they like the experience of of smoking or the experience of drinking, but they're not uh, crazy about flavors that just dominate uh, the experience. So anyway, uh, something kind of fun. I thought that was a a, a good pairing, and um, and uh, you know, if you're ever looking for a or if you ever do have a whiskey that you're like, man, I you know, I like it. It's just kind of missing something. Maybe try. Um, try that yourself. Try some uh, kind of tobacco. Just um, do it yourself. Don't, just do it yourself. <laughs> what do you try, think? We're, we're here to do it for you. Try you do it yourself. Try some kind of tobacco that you know you think can really uh, you know add to the experience without mm. uh, without overpowering it so much that um, that you feel like you can't enjoy the original product. Yeah, so, and let us know what you think. Yeah, like we're we're anyway, always just, just we'll something to keep in mind. Recommendations. Yeah. Uh, you know, it is interesting. Whenever you are uh, uh, trying some various beverages, pairing various tobaccos, you want to make sure that, you know, when you're doing this with the best, cleanest type of palate you can. And so with that, what you want to make sure you're doing is drinking some good, pure Ozerka water. Ozerka? Ozarka. Ozarka? It, is there an Ozerka anywhere on this earth? Drink the water in the bottle <laughs> that's clear, crisp, crisp and clear and crisp and clean and always pristine or whatever the... <laughs> saying used to be but of course no i'm not talking about bottled water i'm talking about making sure that you get a good quality smoke from the pipes from missouri meerschaum that's exactly right man of course you're trying all these delicious new pipe tobaccos and uh want to want to check out something that is uh you know interesting get the get the pure flavor nuances of that tobacco uh get your the, the equivalent of the fresh clean glass uh for your favorite new whiskey that's right. uh is uh is of course the brand new missouri meerschaum pipe they're all reasonably priced tonight we uh feature the fifth avenue at uh, fifth Avenue Diplomat Corn Cob Pipe. Um, it, the Diplomat is is fun. This actually might be a better pipe for um, kind of once you figure out that you really like a tobacco because uh, it does have a generous bowl. This is a uh, it's certainly not a MacArthur, but it is a uh, it's a large bowl uh, for a Missouri Meerschaum. And um, the uh, the one we feature tonight is the uh, the straight stem pipe. It's the Fifth Avenue uh, version. It's got uh, just a you know a really almost a half cob really uh, in in the you know very uh, you know, kind of uh, dainty, uh, you know, shank that comes out there with the with the black stem, and so just a really high quality piece. It's one of the uh, probably the more sophisticated looking pieces that that the folks at Missouri Meerschaum yeah. make in, in their lineup. It's almost yeah. it's like a MacArthur, but it's manageable. Yeah, I th- yeah, you know I, think, I, mean? I think I think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's right. That's right. Yeah, I mean, it's something that uh, you know, again, uh, you know, with the MacArthur, you've got a lot of room there, but you're also making a <laughs> making quite a statement. Boom, this uh, yeah. this get this maintains a lot of the room, but uh, you know, you're not you, you've got something that you um you know can can put in a in a large pocket. You'll you'll still turn heads with this one. Don't don't make any mistake on that. And that's a good. No, thing. that's right. That's right. But hey, if you got it, be sure to smoke it this week. That's, Take a yeah. picture of yourself. Tweet it down. It's a great way to let the good folks at Missouri Meerschaum know you appreciate them for. Sponsoring this show. Meerschaum. 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 <laughs> Meerschaum. <laughs> All right, man. Probably question of the week comes in from Adam Z. Yeah. Uh, Adam Z writes in. He <clears throat> says, <clears throat> there was an episode I was listening to in which, if I recall correctly, uh, JD, not your new employee, JD. This is, of course, John. Referring David to me. Of the Cole uh, okay, family. Okay. Okay. Uh, said that stems are interchangeable on Nording freehand pipes. Where would I go to buy such uh, extra st- extra stems? I just ordered a Nording freehand, and I'm interested in also getting a Church Warden stem for it. 
Nording's website doesn't seem to offer the stems. Interesting. Yeah. If you contact your local tobacconist, they can um, they can probably uh, get a hold of one for you. So Nording um, from the American distributor, which is the Arango company based out of uh, Illinois, um, they sell uh, stems uh, just separate for their pipes. They're one of the few uh, major pipe brands in the United States that will just sell you a stem. Uh, for the pipe. Now, you know, Nording stems are, are peculiar, you know, in, in most of the freehand Nordings, uh, you know, they, they look to be interchangeable and they certainly sell the stem as if they are. Um, but, you know, your mileage may vary, right? There's, there's cases in which maybe the, uh, the drill hole for the stem, the mortise hole is, is going to be smaller than another. Uh, and so maybe the stem won't go in as far as you'd like it to, or things of that nature. But, but on, on average, that is the idea that you can swap them in and out. Um, you know, we've even had folks that have taken uh, church warden stems off a of Nording and then put it on, uh, you know, like you said, put it on a uh, one of the freehand pipes. And so you've got a church warden stem um, there. You know, I would I would just look into that. If you can't uh, find it, give us a call here at the shop. We'll try to track one down for you. Um, but but they do market it like that. And I have seen it work a couple times like that in person. Um, and so if you Google them, uh, you know, check out on eBay, you should be able to find uh, one, any Nording uh, authorized retailer uh, should also be able to order you uh, one of those two. And so, uh, you know, check out your favorite tobacconist, um, you know, whether it's us or, or some other uh, brick and mortar or, or online store, uh, they should be able to get it, get their hands on one of those for you. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. Too. And, and, and also we have had a lot of folks, you know, if you find a pipe repair guy, um, you know, someone like Reborn Pipes, good friend of the show, or uh, gosh, the countless other, uh, you know, pipe repair folks that are available in America, they can make you a, a, a stem for a, a Nording, a, a church warden stem relatively easily. You know, it's not a not something that's going to be over the top uh, for them to do. The nice thing about Nording stems is is that they're they're super forgiving because it's not a flush fit stem. Mm. The 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 stem is kind of a it just it almost like a military mount. It just kind of plugs into the end of the block of wood, you know. And so uh, you don't have to t spend a lot of time sanding and lining things upright. All you have to do is make sure that it's a tight fit between the uh, the tenon and the and the mortise hole. And and you know that's you know for a experienced you know stem maker that's that's pretty easy. And so um, so anyway, uh, you know check around. That's something that you can get if if not nording. Uh, name brand, you could get that even from an American artisan, which I'm sure would be glad to do that for you. So, all right, yeah, right on. Well, thank you for that question, Adam. And hey, if you've got a pipe question of the week, you can send it into us show at Country Squire Radio. That oh, wait, wait was it? let me try that again. Show at Country Squire Radio.com. Again, that's show at Country Squire Radio.com. <laughs> Slurring Ozerker, Ozarka, or Ozeraka. I mean, your tolerance has gone down. Oh, Sriracha. <laughs> oh, Sriracha. Don't you cry for me. What? It? It's Oh, Susanna. Yeah. <laughs> do, do, do we have a, do we have some quick fire question? Kids will do that to you, man. They, yeah, that, knock, that's, they knock out your tolerance. No, that's, what I, that's what I hear. You <laughs> know, it's a little bit harder. <laughs> <laughs> Quick fire questions. Ow! All right, man. We got some quick fire questions in from, oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Our favorite lesbian uh, uh, pastor. <laughs> father. We, uh, our, our favorite our, lesbian foster, that, father. That That is exactly right. Yeah. Of course, it's Father Andrew, uh, man, our, our dear friend and uh, good brother, man. He, you know, uh, Father Andy, he actually brought me lunch today. Oh, at, really? at the shop he oh, stopped man, in man. uh man it was cool he was like yeah hey, i got some extra time i'm a, yeah, i know john david doesn't eat a lot i'm gonna take him some lunch and so he actually actually brought me some it was uh it was really nice but yeah so we got some got some quick fire questions from uh father andy today yes sir from okay father andy okay uh, all right so here's what father andy asks rice brown or white brown it depends on what it what context like it, you yeah, just, it's a good question. Cause it, like you yeah. wouldn't put, I mean, maybe you would, but like you wouldn't put gumbo over brown rice. You wouldn't put red beans over brown rice. You wouldn't put yeah etouffee over brown rice. Like I wouldn't. Yeah, I guess you're right. You know, if it's if it's if the rice is speaking by itself, uh -huh. I'm gonna go with brown rice. But if you're pairing it rice with something, you know, like a gumbo, I mean, gosh, you're gonna want white rice for that. But uh, I, I guess if the rice is by itself, I'll take brown rice. Brown rice is healthier. Uh, but white rice is just so much more versatile. I think you got sushi as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna go with white rice. Okay. Uh, chicken, fried or baked? Fried. Oh man. Let's be honest about it. We're yeah. in the deep south. It's it's fried chicken. 
It is fried chicken. Have here. you ever had the fried chicken from the McDade's on Fortification Street? <laughs> no, is it good? It, it. I mean, it, it. We will eat that at the at the feast of the lamb one day. All right, but to be fair, like it, it, it is so good. Your porch, in which you have like drunkenly like like walked from to the grocery store, it's like a block I've away. I've never drunkenly walked to the grocery store. I'm from saying, my porch. if you needed to, that's but the if fried, I needed that to, that is your fried chicken. Okay. <laughs> so like, it, I can definitely right. I, I can imagine that that's some well, delicious. They, fried they close chicken. their kitchen counter at like five. <laughs> I mean, you know, let, let's 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 be honest here. All right, all right. So drunkenly <laughs> stumbling in at five o'clock. No, <laughs> right, right, right. You know, just another Tuesday, right? <laughs> <laughs> I will say this though, the, I'm going to give it to baked chicken and I will tell you why. Golly. No, no, no. It's, it's a family thing because my grandmother <laughs> on Christmas uh, would always bake. She'd, she'd always have roast, which was delicious, but then she'd also bake a couple of chickens and she would stuff those things like rosemary, thyme, lemons. And whenever to this day, whenever I smell like chicken baking, it always takes me back to my grandmother's house. So I'm going to give it to baked chicken. And I feel like I feel I feel like I've got a, a good reason. Well, that's fine. You know, I just I, that's fine. Whiskey on the rocks or a neat. I'm gonna go with. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna surprise you and say on the rocks. And you judged me. I for the chicken. I have I I used to be a neat guy, and this is in the very you're, you're a neat guy. This is a very thanks. Yeah, hey, thanks. I yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> this is in the very recent past you know i was a neat guy right i mean it's you know if i wanted to try whiskey i drink it uh without without um uh, without ice um for some reason over the past like probably six months um man i've been a i've been a rocks guy i i, I don't know maybe it's uh maybe i'm getting old and, and a little uh, a little soft i don't know but i i'm a i'm a rocks guy now yeah or at, at least for this season that i'm in i mean okay so you know, I've also been smoking more aromatic tobaccos. Have you really? I, ha I have been. I've been really enjoying them. I've been experimenting with in the kitchen, blending uh, with more aromatic ingredients, uh, doing, uh, you know, some stuff with, with that, some surprising things that I'm like, man, I can't believe I'm actually trying this. But I, I wonder if something's there, you know, something's there. I, I'm drinking, um, you know, sweeter beverages. Ice on whiskey, you know, whiskey on ice. Uh, more you got, aromatic you got a tobacco. Lady at the house twenty four seven. I, well, I don't know. You know, so yeah, I, yeah, I know, right? I know. <laughs> she, she like she, her taste preferences are more masculine than mine are. You know, we go out and I'm the one that gets a Pinot Grigio, and she's like, I want Johnny Walker. <laughs> Dude, my wife the same way. She'll go red, I'll go white. Um, yes. Yeah, so, yep. so, so, but I am kind of curious about that. Would you, would you still be enjoying as many aromatics now if it wasn't like literally your job to explore and find different? potential flavor pairs? no probably not yeah i mean that that's the thing like you know you, you kind of stumble upon just as as you know it's a career i've chosen right and so you you know i'm always trying new tobaccos and, and want to do that but because of that occasionally you stumble upon something you're like man that's really interesting on, and like yeah. and then you start thinking well what can i do with that or or you know better yet for me I, i'm always wanting to learn from people that know more than i do so what is what has someone else done with that mm -hmm. right what is what has someone else that's more established done with this or that and maybe how can i tweak that or um, you know, move it in a new direction. And so, um, yeah, just by virtue of that, you know, you kind of, I don't, I don't know, you get exposed to things and before you know it, you're pouring your, you know, whiskey over, over ice and, uh, and, and pulling out some of your favorite, uh, berry flavored tobaccos again. So, uh, yeah, you never know. Interesting. All yeah. right. Well, finally, and uh, I'm neat all the way. Uh, although I do have like one of those, like, um, ice rock creators, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Those are cool. Those are pretty cool. Yep. Finally, ham and eggs or bacon and eggs. Uh, bacon and eggs. Bacon and eggs. Uh, yeah. If the choice is ham five, eggs, five times out of five, bacon and eggs. Yeah, versus bacon and eggs. Ham and eggs is about as close to blasphemy as you could possibly get. So bacon and eggs. Unless you're Dr. Fuge. Unless you're Doc. Well, it's green eggs. Mm -hmm. Well, it's green at that point. There's green green eggs and ham. There was no talk. Of green I didn't eggs. say what color it was. Yeah, this was no talk. Yeah. Of green eggs. Uh, but great quick fire questions. Of course. Yeah. Those thanks, were, Father Andy. That's Father great. Father Andy. And quick fire questions brought to us by the good folks at the Ten Society. Uh, now, if you haven't head over to the Ten Society, I'm sorry, TenSociety.com, you absolutely should. It's a great online service that brings you tobaccos to your door every single month. Now, this is a great way to find different tobaccos that you might want to try, that you might want to test, see what's there. And not only that, but, you know, you get that first box, you get a Missouri Meerschaum pipe. And every single month, you also get a little additional goodies along the way. Uh, as we mentioned at the top of the show, we very recently did an unboxing video from our uh, box from the Ten Society. 
And uh, yeah, it's it's always kind of like a fun treat and treasure to find what's going to be in there. A every new month, you know, you've got this this little present that shows up at your door. And for the pipe smoker, it is it is the best present because you get <laughs> all these new tobaccos to try. Of course, you're able to try uh, multiple bowls of different tobaccos, and it just gives you an idea of what they are uh, without having to commit to an entire tin. And and and, and kind of like what I was talking about, also, you know, you you get exposed to, to things that maybe you're outside of your wheelhouse, right? And before you know it, they might be your favorite. And so uh, the folks at the Tin Society, they put it together. It's really uh, professionally done. It makes you uh, feel really good when it comes. The, 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 the presentation is super nice. And, uh, and we're proud to partner with them to, um, to make the show. Absolutely. And of course, if you use the code SQUIRE when you check out, you get 20% off on your first month's service. So again, that's TinSociety.com. Use the code SQUIRE for 20% off on your first month's service. All right, man. We got some great listener feedback in. Yeah, dude. Um, okay, let's let's start off. Let's let's start off with Doug Owen. Of course, uh, Doug, good friend of the show, longtime listener, and uh, man, he's almost becoming a regular contributor. Like, like, yeah. his comments, his yeah. feedback is always so good. And this one in particular, I found uh, uniquely special. So this I'm is strong. Really, really excited about this. This is strong. You want to read it? Yeah, please do. Please yeah, do. from our good friend Doug, he says, in 1943, my father was in the South Pacific in the infantry, uh, fighting the war, and at some point. Uh, General Douglas MacArthur came through to review the troops and happened to stop at my dad. Dude, dude. <laughs> could, could you imagine? Dude. Like, I, I would have to go change my underwear. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> if Douglas MacArthur stopped at me on the line and started, like, checking to make sure my shirt was pressed right. and all that kind of stuff, right. like, I, I'd, I'd have to phone it in at that point. Um, he stopped at my dad. Uh, and asked if he was getting enough to eat. Uh, well, of course, my dad said, yes, sir, as one might expect. Uh, but the point of the story is that my father was so impressed with meeting the general uh, that when I was born, he named me Douglas, uh, which is so cool. And that awesome? that, that's really great. Uh, maybe that's why my pipe smoking became a passion of mine. Uh, anyway, as you might imagine, I've done quite a bit of reading on the general, and it turns out that the briar was his favorite pipe, and the cob was usually pulled out and used uh, when he wanted to make a strong visual statement, uh, which, of course, you know, those iconic pictures of him. He kind of knew, you know, MacArthur was, uh, as I'm sure Doug could tell you more than I could, but uh, he was— um, he, he knew how to sell it. You know, I mean, he was a personality. He was uh, more of a politician, really, than anything. And so, uh, you know, him having this iconic corncob pipe, making these pictures that are very memorable, he knew exactly what he was doing with that. Um, and so, uh, anyway, he goes on to say, the general, God bless him, was not only a great warrior, but also quite theatrical by nature. Huh. And uh, he says, keep puffing. So, uh, Doug, that's cool, man. I, I had no idea you were named, named, uh, named after uh, Douglas MacArthur. That's, that's cool. That's really great. You know, it, it is interesting because so so much uh, today uh, of today's lexicon, we talk about like personal branding and that sort of thing. It's yeah. a very millennial yeah. uh, tr a tribute. But at the same time, like Doug McCarthy, he's like a grandfather of it. He's like a is an OG. No, that's right. In, in the uh, in the self branding department, uh, man. We also uh, uh, listener Eric uh, top the show. We mentioned, of course, a new Squire member uh, at the uh, International Country Squire Radio Pipe Club. What did Eric have to, have to say? Uh, Eric said, just joined. Uh, Y'all put together a great podcast and excited to see your content grow. Uh, one quick question. Has the RSS feed for the early episodes, episodes 1 through 99, been updated? Uh, the current one provided at this website no longer works. Thanks in advance. And that's from Eric. Yeah, Eric, uh, great question. Um, so I mentioned this a couple episodes back, but, um, you know, back when the uh, the site was hacked a couple months ago, um, you know, that I, I think I mentioned this. The good news is that yeah. most everything is on, on a new client. However, there are a few things that haven't been moved over to a new hosting client. One of those things is the original Country Squire Radio 100 episode feed. They are, the episodes are secure. They exist in a zip disk, like in a zip file <laughs> that I am and like heavily nervous about, honestly, at the moment, because it's like one of those things that, you know, if anything happens to my laptop, then they're gone. <laughs> so, yeah, we need to back that up. <laughs> yeah, we need, to, we need to back that thing up like as fast as possible. So um, we're, uh, we're trying to find. Can't uh, wait for the meme. As we're trying to find. <laughs> oh, man. Mike, make that flow a little bit better. Um, <laughs> trying to find a good uh, a new hosting client for it, and as soon as we get that together, one that makes the most sense, because obviously this is, um, I mean, I'll just I'll go ahead and just kind of pull the curtain back. But we're looking at a situation where we've got you know 100 episodes. It's going to be pulled by a couple hundred folks. It's not going to be pulled from you know a couple thousand folks like the the main feed. And so we want to be mindful of of where we put that uh, to make sure that it is going to be something that can be special, exclusive for yeah uh, patrons, but at the same time is also not you know, you know, we're not we're not putting it in like this ultra service that we don't necessarily need. Does that make sense? 
Yeah. All right. So, you know, we want something that's going to work and be, uh, you know, very functional, but we also don't necessarily need an aircraft carrier. Exactly. Yeah. Um, which is kind of a weird, we, country square radio has always existed in kind of a weird space in the industry. Yeah. (laughs) No, that's right. Yeah. All industries that it exists in. And so, uh, so from that standpoint, we're just trying to figure out exactly where it needs to go. But all that to say, it is still very top of mind for me. And as soon as it's updated, uh, you will, you and along with all the uh, uh, Country Squire Radio uh, Pipe Club members, past, present, and future, will be made aware of where that new feed is. So, yeah, it is coming, Eric. Thank you so much for asking. And, yeah, it uh, kind of gives us an opportunity to to let other folks know about that too. So, absolutely. Hey, hey, real, real quick, I, we've got to mention a, a couple other things too. And uh, our our good friend Beardcore, uh, he says his roommate is watching tonight. His yeah. name is Brian. So uh, from Grand Rapids. So, so hey, hey, Brian, mentioned twice now, three times on this episode. And 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 so we'll just you know continue to mention that yeah. since, since I've forgotten. <laughs> um, I, I wanted to read this. This is so cool. Um, man, a, another Eric who's very dear to us and who um, has been a longtime listener uh, is actually watching tonight, uh, which, which is cool. Uh, it's not Eric Stokeby, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's probably probably deceased at this point. But um, this is um, this is Eric Vanderpool and Eric, uh, just a really kind, gentle, gentle brother from uh, from Houston, Texas, and um, has been a longtime friend of the show. He sent us a little gift. And, cool. uh, and and wrote us a, a little note here. And um, this is a review that he actually put on iTunes. I don't think we've mentioned this before um, on, on the show. And so I'm just going to read this uh, real briefly. Okay. Um, and then I'll, uh, I'll, I'll kind of talk about what he's done here. But anyway, he's got, um, uh, he says, a few tokens of appreciation for everything that we've done for the pipe community. And uh, brother, that's just really kind. You're, you're very, very nice to, um, to say that, man. But he says, when I first moved to Houston for work, I found myself feeling a bit lonely for leaving my friends and family behind in Michigan. Uh, I began to dive pretty deeply into podcasts, and at some point I thought, I wonder if there's one about pipes. Sure enough, uh, up popped Country Squire Radio. I love podcasts because they often make you feel like you're a part of the conversation rather than just a listener. Uh, With Country Squire Radio's active engagement with their audience through social media, you actually will be a part of the conversation. Uh, they have made a Michigan transplant in Texas feel right at home in Mississippi uh, every Monday night when I sit down and watch the live show on YouTube. Uh, furthermore, they have encouraged me to get back into the hobby of pipe smoking and join my local pipe club. Uh, you know that a podcast is doing something special when you will drive seven hours one way to listen to a live recording of the podcast just because you have nothing better to do. <laughs> <laughs> he came to our uh, our 200th uh, show yeah, right on. Uh, that, that we did. So uh, two friends sitting down talking about things they love. That is Country Squire Radio. And Eric, you're, you're so kind, man. Uh, I, just real briefly, Eric sent us uh, a couple of different tobaccos. He actually he actually made us uh, two two tobaccos. He made what? one he made one for uh, for me. Uh, this is um, a mixture. It's seventy percent Orlick Golden Slice that's been aged uh, with McClellan Stoved Virginia. Uh, and so just uh, delicious. I, I, I can't wait to try it. Have not have not had it yet. But those two tobaccos, of course, are are excellent. Uh, this one he calls Bo's Barbecue. What? Oh! And uh, he said, I developed this blend for you to invoke my experience with barbecue growing up. I know how much you love barbecue, uh, though I live in Houston now. I grew up in southern Michigan. We don't really have slow smoke things up here. Uh um, up north like everyone does in the south. When things started warming up uh, in May and June, we would grill out. One of my favorite things to do was make barbecue sauce by uh, marinating fresh summer fruit like apricots or blueberries in a mixture of vinegar and honey. Uh, we would then use the sauce and glaze chicken uh, and ribs on the grill. Uh, Bo's Barbecue is a Virginia Ford tobacco with notes of caramelized apricots and blueberries mm. and just a hint of smokiness. Tangy and sweet. Sip on this and it will treat you right. And so uh, that is from our dear friend Eric. And then he also uh, made us actually this uh, kind of go to go along with the barbecue uh, note. He actually made us two um, two seasoning rubs. Uh, before um, oh, snap. that we can actually use on burgers or steaks or anything like that. Dude, they are sending us this th- this seasoning it, for barbecue, and they've already like custom made the tobaccos to smoke with the barbecue. I it you're just you're just reaching at straws here. No, I mean no, it, it's this just is, we're holding us. It's a, <laughs> this is this is not straws. This is becoming a thing. I mean, I you know it, it, it at some point you know you just got to say like what you know I, I I don't know what to think. I mean I don't. <laughs> I mean, I, I have people lost their minds. Like, I mean, what, this is what we're gonna do. This, I'm just, you're gonna I'm you're gonna this. you're gonna pair pipe tobacco with barbecue. Did like, they it, have it, at some point? This has gone beyond this. This is not pairing pipe tobacco. This is literally customing creating pipe tobacco based off of to be paired with barbecue and the rub to use on said barbecue on the barbecue. Yeah. 
Maybe, maybe y'all are wearing me down. I don't know. Oh my gosh! Like what we're gonna have to do? Like I, 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 I just I, it, at some point I'm like I've got to preserve some kind of dignity. You know what I mean? Like hey, you know, one day when I have kids and they're old enough to understand what I'm doing here on Country Squire Radio, they'll be like, you know, oh well, what what did you do, do, Dad? Well, you know, I I use this as an excuse to to drink, eat barbecue, and smoke a pipe. I'm putting I'm putting the call out. I'm doing this now. <sighs> uh, inspired by Eric. And and the uh, amazing contribution of this amazing Bose barbecue, Eric. This is some awesome. Excellent, excellent rub. Uh, if you, dear Country Squire Radio listener, want to see a pipe tobacco and barbecue pairing, here is what you must do. We will all do this together uh, on an upcoming day, which I am about to state. We will all get behind our barbecues. We will all barbecue, grill, cook our favorite meats, and we will enjoy a pipe while we're doing it. Here's what I want you to do: go to Twitter on this day, July fourth, and uh, show what you are grilling. <laughs> <laughs> and that you are smoking your pipe tobacco. The, the sole purpose, we will declare our independence from John David's way of thinking. We will call this our My independence My shallow, narrow, narrow way of thinking. No longer will July 4th be just an American holiday, but it'll be our Independence Day. You're quoting that movie. I, you don't know movies. I know, no, but that, I know that one. I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> What's it called? The 4th of July, something like that? Independence Day. Yeah. I, I know. Oh, man, this is awesome. This is amazing, Eric. And uh, yeah, actually, uh, so we we um yeah, you're, uh, his his he, Eric has also found a cheat code of getting your iTunes review read early by m literally mailing it in. I know, right? Otherwise, he mailed was, it in. This was coming yeah. up in two weeks, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, that's great. Anyway, Rip, really kind, Eric. We're so thankful for you, brother. And uh, man, these are these are great gifts. It's been a pleasure to get to know you. And um, man, I'm I'm glad you're Ooh. glad you're holding the flame up high down there in uh in Houston, Texas. Yeah, so, yep, that's good. Well, hey, uh, you know, we want to give a shout out to all of y'all that are that are uh, writing in and sending in your tweets and sending in that feedback. It's always uh, good to get that from you. If you'd like to send in some feedback, we'd love to have it from you. Head over to iTunes, write a review, uh, then then copy paste it, send it in, mail it in directly to the Squire. <laughs> you too can, <laughs> <laughs> can get ahead of the list. I'll get that one out there. Uh, but yeah, we love getting those iTunes reviews in. It's a great way to help out the show. It doesn't cost you a dime to do it. But if you are willing to spend a few dimes to do it, head over to patreon.com slash country squire radio, become a patron, uh, become a club member. And uh, yeah, you can be part of making this action happen every single week without fail. Uh, you can also keep up with us throughout the week. You can follow us on Twitter. I'm at the real Bo York. I'm at John David Cole, or you can get us at the shop at, at underscore country squire. And of course, the show's handle is at squire radio, but all that and more can be found at country squire radio.com where you can also tune into the show live on Monday nights uh, at 8.30 p.m. Central. That's 6.30 Pacific and 9.30 Eastern. Man, also, I uh, should have mentioned this at the top of the show, and I'll likely do it next week. But, um, yeah, so, you know, we, we've mentioned before that a couple of us uh, Squire Squire uh, fans and, and listeners and, and this particular host uh, get together from time to time on this game called Sea of Thieves. Good pirate game. Oh, yeah, yeah. How's that going? The Squire Scallywags, man. It's going good. But we, we yeah. uh, one of our members is uh, is gone out for a couple of weeks uh, on uh, during the summer. And so we need another crew member. So if you happen to be playing Sea of Thieves and you want to join the Scallywags, uh, hit me up on Twitter. Let me know. Uh, and if you're not on Twitter, email show at countrysquireradio.com. I know a couple of y'all mentioned it. It's just Twitter's been the main way that we've been kind of coordinating our, our crew. But um, I'm open to getting creative there. Just just let me know. Show at countrysquireradio.com. Just put squire, Scallywags in the title and We'll add you to the crew. <laughs> you could join Captain Jorvik and the uh, the crew of the White Rose. Arr, arr. It's uh, it's it's a fun time. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, look, I, Dude, just... I had fun night. Of course, what's not to love about Squire Select? You know, we just sit here and uh, drink on interesting uh, interesting drinks and uh, look at just ridiculous memes that are uh, tweeted into us and. Um, you know, smoking some great tobacco and it's, uh, yeah, it, it's been a good night, man. Man, it has been a good night. Good night for you. Good night for me. Good night for Brian in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. That's right. Uh, tuning in for the first time and uh, mentioned now four times. That's on right. This, uh, That's right. This episode. Well, welcome. Welcome. And it's all because you're Beard Corps' roommate. This is what you get. This is like a perk for being Beard Corps' roommate. Dude, I know, right? No, it's, it should, should have be been Beard Corps' he roommate. He should have put it in the flyer. From now on, Beard Corps, if, if you if charge Brian, extra rent for that, if right? If Brian sucks, if he's terrible and you need to get a new one, just put it in the flyer. You will get a name drop on Country Squire Radio Live. I, I guarantee it. People will be like, what's that? Yeah. Yeah. No, they'll, they'll know. They'll know. They'll have heard of the horse and the glue. All right. <laughs> Wait, man, let's go have a night. See you, brother. All right, guys. Thank y'all so much. <laughs> y'all are awesome. <laughs> Closing it out like a professional. No, that's you it, like dude. That? I mean, we, you know, we run off all people from all kinds of different countries, yeah. all parts of the United States, horse enthusiasts, yeah. uh, you know, rice enthusiasts. I mean, it, 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 every, everyone, it, it, glue, glue enthusiasts, enthusiasts, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's man. exactly right, man. It's good to, good to hang out with y'all and uh, appreciate you a bunch. Yep. See you guys. We'll